Alhamdulillah. Can you just uh, ask the one who's at the back? Can you hear me at the back? Can they hear me? Yes? Papa? Alhamdulillah. Why? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-mursaleen, wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een, wa ala man tabi'a hudahum ila yawiddin. All praises due to Allah, we praise Him, seek His aid and ask His forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evils of ourselves and from the evils of our actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, none can lead astray. And whomsoever Allah leads astray and can guide, I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except for Allah alone be no partner. And I bear witness that Muhammad is a slave and his messenger. To proceed, that is the best of talks, beyond any doubt, is the Quran. And the best of guidance is the guidance of his messenger Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him. And really the most evil of all matters are the ones innovated for every new innovated matter in Islam is an innovation. And every innovation in Islam is a misguidance, and every misguidance will lead to the hellfire. Just before we start, just to little bit of technical issues here, because of we prepared to go give this talk to a diff in a different hall, and uh, we were not provided with the. Uh, PowerPoint presentation, but last minute.com we have just been told, alhamdulillah, that you could use a PowerPoint presentation, but we don't have the cable from my laptop to the screen, so I will, I don't know. Good job. Right. So we're going to ignore maybe the PowerPoint presentation, and I'm going to just go with my uh, preparations of the talk. No problem, John. Recording is no problem. Okay, so no. Last note, no interruption. Uh, you know, the technical issues is not really important what to do in the Umrah. The most important thing is to prepare your heart for this journey. Some of you, it's the first time for him. Some of you have done it so many times. But even the person who's done it so many times, he needs to make sure that he sets his heart properly. Because you are about to reset your meter, and I know what I'm talking about. That means you need to make sure that your sins have been removed. The one who's in the left, the, left, the angel, is writing all your sins. Now you need to make sure that he has got nothing in the book now. So that's why I want to maximize my effort to get, inshallah, a umrah that will make me to bring me back just to start from zero. And as for the hasanat, we'll be carrying on. So the most important thing is ikhlas, ikhwan. Ikhlas is that your worship is for the sake of Allah and nobody else. You are not coming here for the sake of taking a title that you are Haji or Mu'tamiri or a person that you paid a visit to the Umrah. You came here, as I said, to seek the pleasure of the Almighty Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. For that sake, a person, he needs to make sure that he stops all these things that displeases Allah. What's the point of you coming to make a Umrah and you are in a sin? <coughs> So a person who's a smoker, for example, and coming here, and every time he prays the Bukhar, then goes to the stairs, hides himself, and smokes a cigarette. I mean, it doesn't work like this. It doesn't. So you need to make sure that you have to make an effort and a commitment from now that I'm going to stop sinning against Allah. It's not right to go and please Allah for the prayer and come back and sin against Allah when I smoke. It's not correct to go and please Allah Azza wa Jal, then come back and show my hair as a sister, which is not supposed to be for the men. It's not correct to go and please Allah Azza wa Jal and come as a man and do the things which is haram. Whether it is from all these acts, even shaving the beard, ya khwan, shaving the beard is not allowed in this time. So make an effort, inshallah, from now, from this point, that I'm going to uh, make a commitment to Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala, I will stop the sins. From them, the sins, for example, you're not allowed as a man uh, to put golden rings. Some of us have golden rings, you have to remove that and you say that this is haram, this pleasing Allah Azza wa Jal. And uh, from the things that we need to make sure that we understand is that uh, invest in your time. Some of us are keen just to go to the market and start shopping. That's what he's coming for, the shopping. Or to make sure that he gets the best of food. No, the best of food that you want is for your heart. Here, the food of the taqwa is the most important food. So you choose which food you want. Is it the food for the belly of yours to go get bigger or the food of the heart to get more closer to Allah Azza wa Jal? So it is important that whenever there is a circle that you could benefit from, in the haram, after Fajr and after 
as well salawat, like for example, after the Maghrib or after Isha, there are some circles, some of it in your own home language, whether it is Urdu, whether it is even Sihau, Sihadi, Sahau, Sahau, the language of the Indonesians. There are, alhamdulillah, people that they could indicate, gain that opportunity and make sure that you understand. Thirdly, it's very important as well to reflect to yourself as a Muslim. You are a Muslim, so your mother should be as well as a Muslim. So it is not correct that we find some of the brothers are shouting at each other or using abusive language. All of that as well is not from the good manners that Islam told us to abide with. And very important as well to choose your companion. The companion of yours is the one who's going to uh, make sure that you are upon the haq. Can I ask for the brothers please, brother, at the back, please put the AC on. There's an AC there, Ikhwan. There's an AC. Put it on. It's really hot now. The three ACs there, Zakamullah Khaira. So I can't do the technical issue plus the talk. Okay. The uh, scholars, alhamdulillah, are around. Yesterday, alhamdulillah, we had a company of more than one scholar, two scholars, mashallah. So we gain our time just to be with those scholars and maximize our reward, alhamdulillah. Okay. Now we're coming to the poet as well, something that I've seen some of the brothers they do. that. When they go to the haram, as soon as the prayer is finished, they don't care about Salat al-Janazah. Why well, Salat al-Janazah is very important? The prayer of the funeral. So make an opportunity to pray every single <laughs> janazah. And don't say it is boring. Every prayer there is a death, every prayer there is a person to, to pray the janazah. Don't skip that. Okay? So make sure that you pray Salat al-Janazah. Salat al-Janazah is very rewardable. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had said that if you are able to do that, then you'll have a qirat. Qirat is like the mountain of Uhud, of, hus of hasanat, of rewards. So make sure that you maximize your hasanat by in investing into praying the janazah. The prayer of the janazah, alhamdulillah, you would, when you are there, the first takbirah, after the first takbirah, you say the dua, uh, sorry, the fatiha, and then after the fatiha, you could say a surah if you wish, it's a long, and then after that, the second takbirah, you don't have to raise up your hand. Second takbir, as-salat Ibrahimi, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, ala Ali Muhammad, kama salli ta'ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim, innaka habidun majid, barak ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad, kama barak ta'ala Ibrahim wa ala Ibrahim, innaka habidun majid. And then, the third takbir after that, the dua. So you make dua into the, for the person who had died. If it's people, you make it in a plural. And the best dua is to learn the dua of the Prophet who had done it for the deceased. So, Allahumma fir lahu wa rahamu wa krimuzu lahu wa sabud khalahu to the end of the dua. Fine. Now, we're coming to the Umrah that we came for to understand what is the Umrah. So the Umrah, as already ordered, you, know, you have done, you've done intention, alhamdulillah, coming from the UK with the intention of coming to do the Umrah. So the intention is already there. But to start the Umrah, it's like when you start the prayer. How do you start the prayer? Takbir al-Ihram. And then when you are starting the Takbir al-Ihram, then there are things you can't do after Takbir al-Ihram. From those things that, for example, you can do when you pray, you say, Allah, Allah, I can't, for example, start sewing my clothes when I pray. I cannot eat a sandwich. I can't drink water. Also, when I start my Umrah, he had not the intention, which is the action, and that is when we go to the Miqat, when we say, Labaik Allahumma bi Umrah, there are things for the person who's doing Umrah is not supposed to do. From those things, for example, as for the men and the women, you're not allowed to perfume yourself. You're not allowed to cut from anything from your hair. Just so. I don't know. I don't know. Let me just move this table, please. Just move it.
two of them said the right one. Okay. <coughs> I'm sorry about that, but just to, uh, as I say, technical issues here. Inshallah, just with the uh, PowerPoint presentation. At the, as I said, we didn't have that option yesterday. We just had it, as I said, last minute. So we apologize for that. Um, prohibition of ihram. Prohibitions of ihram. So when the person starts his ihram and says his action, which is the fake Allah and the Umrah, so there are things that you're not allowed to do after we are allowed to do. Before things are allowed, but there are things now we're not allowed to do. From them, for example, in terms of the clothing, we have for the men, you cannot wear except for the haram, you can't wear something which is sewn <coughs> to the limb. I mean, you cannot put a shirt, you cannot put a jacket and all of this. And you cannot cover the head, this is for the men. And uh, the person is not allowed even to put something on top of his head to shade himself from the sun. But you're allowed to put an umbrella and as well you're not allowed to put gloves. Okay, you're not allowed to put gloves. No problem if you are cold to put your hand, but it's not cold <coughs> right? inside your garment, but you're not allowed to put something which is sewn to the limb. Right, after this, for the women, uh, the women can wear their normal clothes. Okay, there's no specifying colors. Um, also, you're not allowed to put the so-called niqab. Okay, sorry about that, niqab. The niqab. And uh, if, if the woman, she is caring about that she, she doesn't want to show her face, then she should really uh, pin her, uh, you know, something that goes to the face by throwing it onto the face when there is men. But there's no, there's no men, she's supposed to uncover her face. So it's only of all necessity. If there's men around, she covers her face. There is no men, she should not cover her face uh, when she's doing the Umrah, when she's in state of Ihram. Fine. The, also from the, as well, the, the perfume. This is for men and women. We should not perfume ourselves, but although you could really, you know, have a ghusl, even sometimes a ghusl uh, takes place with a shampoo that got a smell, there's no problem. It's actually the perfume itself which is not allowed. In terms of uh, cleansing as well, we should not remove anything from the hair. As for the nails, you know, some of the scholars, they said the nails are not supposed to clip, but there is no proof for the hadith, but we say it is better to not to cut the nails while you are in a state of haram. Right. Also from the things that we're not allowed to intercourse, not to wed, to make a wedding, and also we're not allowed to hunt, and all of this, as I said, maybe is irrelevant to you because you're not going to hunt, but you'll be allowed to kill mosquitoes and flies if in case it lands on your face. So hunting is not allowed, fishing is allowed, but I don't think we're going to be doing fishing. Right. Um, now we're coming to the Omarized stations. I'm just going to go jump to where the person going to go to the um, uh, Miqat. So the Miqat now, I'll just explain the Miqat. No, I'll right. right. No, I'll repeat. Okay. This no, I'll repeat. Prophet also said that he had made borders in for the person who wants to make Hajj or Umrah. Those borders, uh, they are known to the people these days by names. So if you could look here at these borders, there are five borders. Count them in one, two, three, four, five. We are at the moment in, you could look at South here, we are in Medina, here. Okay? And the, our border is called, Al, uh, the border that we're going to be coming from, is Dhul Hulayfa. Can you see Al Madina here? Sorry, Al Madina. Is my pointer there? It's not my there, is it? Okay, so we can, I need a pointer here. How do I need a pointer? Okay, uh, pointer. There you go. 
Ah, yes, I got it. Pointer option. Yep, laser. Can you see it now? Yes. Right. And this is the Medina. Can you see it? That's where we are. And we have Dhul Hulayfa. That's Dhul Hulayfa. Is the place we're going to be making Ihram from. So I'm just to stop here, just to make sure that you understand. Dhul Hulayfa is only about five miles away from here. Five miles away from here. Now, we're not, we're not really sort of uh, uh, being obligated to go there to the Hulayfa and start from there. And uh, we could pass by with, by the coach and keep going to the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Umrah to Mecca, and we could make the Umrah intention, which is sorry, the action, which is the make Allah in the Umrah even on the coach. But to uh, to in order to implement the full Sunnah, inshallah, in there in that is Dhul Hulayfa, a place for the valley, which is Wadi Al Atiq. For those who were with me on the coach, I have pointed that with them to them where is Wadi Al Atiq. We could pass over it. That is a valley which is a sacred valley. And the Prophet ﷺ, when he went from Medina to make Umrah, and he was in Dhul Hulayfa, Jibreel ﷺ descended upon him. And he said to him, You are in Mecca fi Batha Mubaraka. You are in a holy land place. <laughs> then he said to him to pray to Raqqa. These two Raqqa mistakenly are being considered to be the two Raqqa of Ihram. That's not correct. There's no such thing, two Raqqa for Ihram. So if you have made your Umrah, let's say, from another place, let's say you made it from Dhatu Irq, or you made it from Al Juhfa, okay, all of these places, you don't need to, to pray. Actually, it is elevation, a bid'ah to pray to Raqqa. Uh, but this place that you pray to Raqqa for the Barakah, the blessings of the valley, the Barakah of the valley. So we're going to be going there in order for these two Raqqa. Otherwise, I would have just but on the coach all the way to Mecca because we will have our haram and all of that. So when you come from here, men, please, uh, put your haram close, okay? So you could be ready, and, 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 and then for the sisters as well, you'll be ready with your, you have your niqab, pinned on everything, okay? So we're gonna just go there, we're not gonna spend more than uh, half an hour to 45 minutes. We will tell you that, inshallah half an hour to 45 minutes as a maximum time. We're gonna go there, and because of the sisters, we're gonna go down to the masjid. There's a masjid there, called Masjid al-Shadara. In there, they will offer the two rak'ah. But because we're gonna leave from here at two o'clock, as I think, two o'clock or is it 10 o'clock? Two o'clock. So we're gonna leave two o'clock. That means we're gonna offer the dhuhr. Can I just ask some peace, please? What your voice, you ring it down, please. Dhuhr, we're gonna pray it in the haram. Because we're going to be traveling, you're going to miss the Asr in the Haram. Take this opportunity after he finishes the Dhuhr prayer in the Haram. <coughs> after the prayer is finished, you make your tasbih, a bit of time, then stand up and make iqama and make two rak'ah of Asr individually, not in a jama'ah, in the Haram. So you get now the full reward of the 1,000 multiple. So after, I repeat, tomorrow when you pray the Dhuhr, the make it tasbih, one minute, 30 seconds, then stand up, okay? Make iqama and make your asr prayer. So everybody expected to, that his asr prayer is being prayed. We're not gonna stop for you to pray the asr there, okay? You want to pray the asr in the masjid there, but it's not gonna have the same multiple there. You could make, pray your asr, but you're not gonna be the same multiple there. So pray the and asr there. On the coach, when we come here, uh, there were some instructions here from the admins regarding your bags and all of this. Anybody would like to give that sort of reminder? Uh, can, can you just come here, please, instead of coming there? Somebody comes here and try to say the instructions, because I don't know. <coughs> yes, after you finish, I'll take it. There will be instructions regarding what we're going to be regarding with the luggage. The luggage. So, then you come back here, and by the time you come back here, it's about 2, about 2 o'clock. So quarter to two, half past one. So we make sure that you are ready. Now, you could have the ghusl, if it's your ghusl, five minutes, ten minutes, inside after the Lord, you could have it before the Lord. Uh, if you have, you are, mashallah, a quick one, and I would say to you, have it just for the sake of going. So you could just have, after you came from the Lord, you make your ghusl, and this ghusl is recommended, because you're making ghusl for the ihram now. 
And if you make it the ghusl, forget haram. If you are a person who is, mashallah, a man, not the woman, sisters, or we make you ghusl, inshallah, here. But if the man is okay and he knows he's been here before, you could make ghusl in the miqat. <coughs> His ghusl has to take within five minutes, quickly. But there are lots of people there. Lots of people there. So advisably, we advise, but we don't say it is not allowed. We advise that you have a ghusl in your room where you're comfortable. Where you're comfortable in the room. Uh, Zahid, please make sure the AC is full on, please. Jazakallah. Really, please, make sure that the AC is on because we are sweating here. Right. The, uh, after we have made the ghusl and we got onto the coach, we're going to go to the Hulayfa. 45 minutes there maximum, half an hour if we can do it. But we're going to be, inshallah, praying the two rak'ah. We could pray them in jama'ah, we could pray them individually. Jama'ah is important. I would say, I would say impossible. For the sisters, each one pray them on their own because you can't have jama'ah in the masjid. You could pray them on your own there. Okay, each one pray the two rak'ah. Of, that is with the intention of that this is the valley of Al Aqiq. As for, for men, we pray there maybe two, five, ten people together, ten, twenty people, and we're not going to pray it in the masjid. We're going to pray it where the valley is. Because for men, you know, you know, we could really, uh, uh, inshallah, pray it outside. We don't have to pray it inside the masjid. And the valley, I could, I could show it. You could come with me, and I'll show you where the valley and where we, are, where we can be praying according to the sunnah. Then after that, we're going to declare the state of the haram. Now, to do this together, I would prefer if we go back to our coaches, okay, and each person who's in charge of the coach will make sure that you will not leave the Hulayfa until you have started your Umrah, which is the Takbir al Ihram. That is going to be the Umrah of yours, okay? So, once you go back to the coach, you're going to stand up and you're going to declare the state of the Ihram. So, let's just go now to our slides here. So I've just showed you now the Mawakheet. There are five Mawakheets. And this one, as I said, the, the furthest one. This is about 116 miles. Uh, no, sorry. It's about, sorry, it's about 255 miles. 255 miles. How long is going to be? Uh, Bashir is going to be about six hours? Six hours, probably. No. Five. Now. Let's go, inshallah, for more Haram Mecca. Now, Mecca itself, I'm going to go to this Haram later on. But let's leave this Haram, let me just go to start. Right. So, if you look at this map, this is the Mawaqeet, and this is Mecca. The, we're coming from the Hulayfa all the way here. And in that, uh, in that time, we're going to be making our uh, tell me on all of this. And here inside, this is called the Haram of Mecca. Haram of Mecca. Haram of Mecca is this where it is borders of the city of Mecca where the person, the person, this is being broken, by the way. Zahid. This is broken, by the way. This is the uh, haram where it indicates, if you remember, behold, maybe Masjid Aisha, okay, that's the Tan'een, there it is, okay. Those are the areas uh, where we indicate the haram. Haram means inviolable area. A person who is not supposed to do things inside, for example, he's not supposed to hunt inside the area. He's not supposed to, to pluck up the plants. He's not supposed to, uh, for example, uh, pick up the lost found. So all of these in that area, which is the Mecca. But you don't have to worry about this. Let's just go to our, inshallah, the... Okay, already we have done our traveling uh, dua. So we don't need to be the traveling dua. But when we go to the bus, we make the mounting dua. What is the mounting dua? Which is, Bismillah, al alhamdulillah, subhanallah, sakhar lana hadha wa ma kunna lahu muqrimeen, wa inna ila rabbina la munqaribun. Allahumma inni dhalamtu nafsi, faghfir li, innahu la yaghfiru al-dhuba illa... At five. This is the dua of mounting the 
uh, bus, the coach, and inshallah we head towards the Hulayfa, and in that Hulayfa we will do our uh, two rak'ah, and that is after that we will go to the coach and we will stand up and we will say the Umrah. So what is the Umrah, inshallah? Let's just go to the Umrah quickly. Okay. Right. So we're going to stay. Labbaik Allahumma bi Umrah. Just to make it easy. Labbaik Allahumma bi Umrah. That means here I am, O Allah, intending Umrah. As soon as we say this point, this word, you are now in a state of ihram. Remember those things that we have said that they're not allowed to put, like the clothes and all of that, um, and the perfume. So from that point, you are in a state of ihram. So this is equivalent to takbirat al-ihram in the salah. So labbaik Allahumma bi Umrah. That's it. As soon as you say this, you are in a state of ihram. You could add as well, which is very good as well, the following. Allahumma umratan la riya'a fiha wa la sunnah. You say, O oh Lord, I intend this umrah solely for you, sincerely for you, not a umrah to show off. So this is the meaning of it. Allahumma umratan la riya'a fiha wa la sunnah. And also, Allahumma mahilli haythu habastani. Oh Allahumma mahilli haythu habastani. O oh Allah, I declare a state of no ihram, Whenever you restrain me, Allahumma mahilli haythu habastani. Meaning, if in case something had happened to you, let's say um, uh, a, a person, man and a woman, fell ill, he can't continue. If you said these words, that if something happened to you, God forbid, later on, then there is no penalty upon you. You don't have to make this umrah again. Okay, and there is nothing to do, so slaughter. But if you haven't said these words, and God forbid something happened to you, could you continue the umrah? then you have to make this Qur'an again, you have to compensate for it, and also you have to slaughter an animal, which is the animal for you being restrained. And this is what we say, say these words and we'll save you from that. Allahumma mahilli haythu habasit. So the person who's in charge of the coach, uh, okay, we tell him to say to the people, say, لَبَيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ بِعُمْرَةً And then tell them to say, Allahumma umratan la ya fiha wa la sun'a and then tell them to say, Allahumma mahilli haythu habastani. Fine. After this, we're going to say the talbiyah. Talbiyah, labbayka Allahumma labbayk, labbayka la sharika laka labbayk, inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk, la sharika lak. So this is the talbiyah that most of the time you're going to keep to it. Now this talbiyah is to make it as loud as you can. Now the companions used to lead they lose their voices uh, in a place called ar -Rawha. And in ar -Rawha, there is a but, uh, less than 36 miles away, the voices will be gone. So the person is not supposed to make the talbiyah in a comfortable voice, or he's even shy of it, and this is for loud. And we're going to remind you of something that we, uh, alhamdulillah, uh, we do here uh, all the time when we go Umrah. We separate between the men and the women. So we have to make sure that the women sit at the back and the men sit, sit at the front. So for those who have a wife or a mother, you have to be separated because of the, uh, you know, the, I mean, you are dressed up in a close of ihram, and on the coach you might sleep, you might move, and something could be uncovered. So we have to separate between men and women. In each coach, the women will be at the back, and the men will be in the front. You have to understand this. So to make sure that you are and your wife, or your mother or your sister, knowing this fact, that you will be separated as a male. If you are an adult, you cannot be sitting as a male with the women. So because of this, sisters, you could make talbiyah as well, within yourself, no problem. You could make it even loud. Aisha Allah to make talbiyah so audible, even Mu'ad Nabi Sufyan had heard it. And he said, who is this? He said, this is your mother. Mother being the mother of the believer, Aisha Allah They could distinguish her voice. So, labbayk Allahumma labbayk, labbayk la sharika laka labbayk, inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk la sharika laka. Now the women, they don't shout as the men, but they raise their voice. The men, they have to uh, raise as much as they can. And the talbiyah, I'm not saying you have to be 24, 7, I mean, all the way to be talbiyah, because it's not impossible. You make talbiyah, every time you find yourself powerful, make talbiyah, you may sleep, no problem. But as I said, talbiyah, the more talbiyah you have, the more reward you're going to get, inshallah. This talbiyah as well, you can be doing other talbiyah as well, with it or uh, instead of it, and that is the first one, labbayka ilaha al-haq. Prophet said, labbayka ilaha al-haq. 
So the first one was the meaning of it. Here I am, O oh Allah, here I am. Here I am, there is no partner with you. Here I am, verily all praise for you. And every bounty is from you. And all dominion <coughs> is yours. You have no partner. That's the first tabiyah. Second one, here I am, I am uh, O Lord of truth. Labbaika ilaha al-haq. So he said, Labbaika ilaha al-haq. Labbaika ilaha al-haq. Please, a point of note here. Yeah? We are not supposed to sing the talbiyah, it's actually to say the talbiyah. So the signal of the talbiyah is not from the sunnah. To synchronize deliberately is not from the sunnah. Each one makes this talbiyah, um, but if it synchronizes like this by coincidence, by with your brother, no problem. Usually it is the case, the one who shouts the loudest, everybody will follow him. Usually it is the case. That's natural. The one who is the loudest, everybody will start making with him. Okay? But you say the talbiyah as loud as you can, you're not intended to synchronize, but if you synchronize by itself, alhamdulillah, no problem. So, don't do the following, which is, the people they say this following because they're following a melody, they're following a song, or something that has been unfortunately presented even by uh, some of the TVs which are official TVs, some of the countries. Like they say, labbaik Allahumma labbaik, and they make a song. لَبَّيْكَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ لَبَّيْكَ And they make a stop. That's correct, but without the money. <coughs> but then they say, إِنَّ الْحَمْدَ And they make a stop. But there's no stop. If you look here, there's a لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ لَبَّيْكَ There's a comma. You can stop. لَبَّيْكَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ لَبَّيْكَ That's a comma. It's a full sentence. But we say, إِنَّ الْحَمْدَ That's not a full sentence. That's a song. You make it like a song. إِنَّ الْحَمْدَ In all the praise, we stop. وَالنِّعْمَةَ And the blessings. لَكَ وَالْمُلْكِ for you and the dominion, that's not correct. So it is inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk. For those who have been doing Ramadan before, it's going to be a bit difficult at the beginning to say inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk. You're going to say inna alhamda wa ni'mata because you've been, you know, brainwash yourself all the way to say inna alhamda, stop. Inna. And that is very important to implement the sunnah of the Prophet. So it's inna alhamda laka wal mulk, inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk. Not in Alhamda, one Ni'mata, Laka wal Mulk, that's not from the Sunnah. La Sharika. Or you could say, La Baika ilaha al Haq. Also, there's other Talbiyas, like the companions, is to La Baika dal Ma'arij, La Baika dal Fawadil, La Baika wa Sa'daik, Wal Khayr bi Yadaik, Wal Rugaba ilaika wal Amal, La Baika Marhuban al Marhuba, La Baika dal Na'mai wal Fadil Hassan. All these Talbiyas have been done. Now, if you have a copy, I'm sure that some of you have got a copy of this on your mobile. You could take a PowerPoint presentation of that on your mobile. You could look at this uh, dua. But you could stick to Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik. Labbaik la sharika lak Labbaik. Inna alhamda wal ni'mata lak wal mulk la sharika lak. Or Labbaik ilaha al haqi Keep repeating those. <coughs> Fine. Now, this, uh, these are some points for the Talmiya. Now we're going to go all the way. For women, I'm just saying here, the women, if let's say, uh, in case, that you have uh, the cycle has started the menstruation please you could later on after this you could come and ask me the question that you need regarding this issue because i could just say in general don't worry about it you make it tell me with us you know, except for the prayer you can't pray the two rakah but you're going to be paying the tell me uh, with us and everything you're going to be doing out until you are there and if you happen to be still on your menses, you can't do the tawaf, you can't do the sa'i until you are finished and cleansed, and then we'll tell you to go to the hill, which is like Rashid Aisha, and then you start doing the umrah bin So if you have this situation, please approach individually. Okay, I'll leave that, inshallah. And now we're going to explain this. We'll finish that. Alhamdulillah. Right, there's some more things. We've got this now. Make it inshallah. Now this is the uh, uh, this is a very old image actually, very old image of the Kaaba. Okay, <coughs> very old image, but the Kaaba is still there, the Sahar is still there, the same. Okay, and this is here Safa, and this is Marwa, Safa and Marwa, right? Okay, so uh, oh, this is the gate, still gate here, gate King Fahd. There's another gate, King Abdul Aziz. As I said, it's an old image. Let me just like, show you Safa and Marwa. Okay, gate of Abdul Aziz here. Right, and then, right, where will we we'll be coming from, Ya, ya Sheikh? Same, King Fahd. So we're going to be entering from King Fahd. According to our hotel, we'll be coming from King Fahd most of the time. So I'm here, opposite to where we live. Okay, right. So, and by the way, it's totally different from the Medina. So it's not really as 
as easy as the maybe they're coming from the hotel to there. It's easy, but it's not, I'm saying more congested, more people. You have to be more prepared to come to the haram. You want to be inside the haram, you have to come as early, so on and so forth. So it's not really as easy as the Medina. Right. Now we're going to go to the Mecca to show you the, basically, this is the, the recent picture. This is a picture of that, the haram, okay? So these are people, by the way. These are people here. You can see them. All of that people. SubhanAllah. Right. <laughs> right, let's just now go to the Kaaba and explain to you before. Okay. This is the Kaaba. Right. This is called the door of the Kaaba. And this is the Miqat, called Miqat Ibrahim. Okay, and that is Al Hijr. I'll explain to you in a minute, inshallah. And that is Black Stone. That is Yemeni Corner. That is Shami Corner. And that is. Iraqi corner. And the direction here was Zamzam. <coughs> Zamzam water is here. It was here the well, the well of Zamzam. And here to Safa. So the and the place would be Marwa on this side. Here to Marwa here. Right. So all of this information that you maybe inshallah you be familiarized with it. Let me just now explain about the Kaaba. Uh, the Kaaba is being when it's being built, the one who built it is Ibrahim alayhi salam. He built it not like this, he built it bigger than this. It was all the way, <coughs> including what is called Al Hijr. We call it Hijr Ismail, believing Ismail was inside it. That's incorrect information. But this is Al Hijr, or Al Hadim, or Al Hashim. That means the broken side of the Kaaba. So I'll tell you the story behind it. So this is the Kaaba, and <coughs> these are corners which are original, by, built by Ibrahim, السلام, which is the black stone corner. And the Yemeni corner, they are exactly as it was at the time of Ibrahim <coughs> But this Yemeni corner, Shami corner, and Iraqi corner, they are not corners. They are actually in the middle of the, uh, almost the two thirds of the Kaaba. What happened at the time of Quraysh, uh, there was a, a flood which had demolished the Kaaba. So they wanted to rebuild the Kaaba. When they rebuilt it, when they rebuilt the Kaaba, they couldn't do the whole of it because they were short financially. So they built two thirds and they made the rest, which is like this semi circle, half semi circle, that's the one. So this one is part of the Kaaba. I may not make tawaf by making a short cut, if it's possible, it's a short cut, but they block, they block it anyway to go from here. It's not. So those corners, they're not corners. And that's why it is not supposed to be. Uh, 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 like for example, the ritual to be done with them, like wiping them. Whereas this corner we wipe it, and this corner we will wipe it. But these corners are not corners. And why the name is Yemeni corner? Yemeni corner because it's facing to Yemen. And also this called Yemeni corner, but they call it the black stone because the black stone is there. The black stone is a stone came from Jannah, from Paradise. And it was white like the snow. And the Shirk, the polytheism of the Kuffar, who had been touching that black stone, turned it into black. That's why it's called the black stone. So the black stone corner is actually the second Yemeni corner. Both corners are facing Yemen. That's why it's called Yemeni corner. Shami corner, they mean, is facing Yad Sham, which is Syria, Jordan, uh, Lebanon, Palestine. That's the Shami corner. Iraqi corner, that means it's facing Iraq. It's called Iraqi corner. But these two corners, as I said, they are not original corners, so they may not be touched. Actually, you can't touch anything from the Kaaba except for number one, the Yemeni corner, the black stone, and also to put your chest onto something called Al Multazam, which I'll explain later on. Al Multazam. Right. Now, coming back to the Hajj uh, Ismail uh, and all of that. So, Maqam Ibrahim. What is Maqam Ibrahim? Maqam Ibrahim is where Ibrahim alayhi salam. Uh, he used to stand up on a rock in order to build the Kaaba. This maqam, okay, was not here, of course, because Ibrahim al Salam, he hasn't got uh, super long hands to build the Kaaba from here, okay? This maqam was next to the Kaaba because he used to stand on it and rebuild it. But Ismail used to bring in the rocks and the stones and he used to build it. So he, well, was on top of a rock. And that rock, he left a mark. That mark is called the Station of Ibrahim. Allah has honored that place where Ibrahim had built the Kaaba from that okay, station, it's called the station. So this was dragged later on at the time of Umar al-Khattab 
were dragged from there and put here in, for the sake of the people can make the law between it and the Kaaba as well. But before, as I said, it was stuck to the Kaaba because Ibrahim used to stand up uh, on it and to put the stones. So this is called Maqam Ibrahim. Right. The Safa is the mountain where uh, Hajar, the mother of Ismail, السلام, she's the one who had to look for water. The story, I'm going to cut it short because of the time as well, that when Ibrahim السلام, left her with her son in that area, in that area, and he had left with her food, a bit, a bit of water. When it ran out, she wanted now water, her baby's crying, so she kept now looking around. There's two hills, areas of it high, called Safa, and another one which is called Marwa. And in between, are called al Abbah, like a, yeah, a place, al Abbah. So she used to go to the Safa in order to look, you know, naturally you want to go to a high area to see. So to Safa, to see if there's somebody can help her, she couldn't find, so she goes down, <coughs> then when she goes to the Abbah, she will tuck up her clothes and start accelerating in order to go up to the following uh, hill, which is called al Marwa. And when she's on top of the Marwa, she still looks around and calls if there is any help, calls Allah Azza wa Jal, goes down again. When she reaches the Abba, she tucks up the clothes, run to accelerate towards Safa. She did that seven times. So each now round from Safa to Marwa one, from Marwa to Safa two, from and then four and the five and he goes to Marwa, that's the seventh one. So we've got now seven round, and that's when we make the sign between <coughs> Safa and Marwa because of our mother Hajar she had done. Now if there was no men, there was no cameras, we would say to the sister, do the same thing as on Hajar, and that is to run just like he too. She was running, but because uh, it would expose the women, that's why we said to the women, you're not allowed to run. It's only for the men, because as I said, the cameras and the men and all of that, we're not allowing the women to run like our mother Hajar. She had run. <coughs> After that, she had uh, the seventh round, she ended up in Marwa. Jibreel alayhi salam came, and he had, uh, with his wing, uh, hit the land and the water of Zanzan came out and she had drank from it, gave her baby Ismail alayhi assalam. Right. Coming back now to the picture and the image, please try to memorize where everything here because I'm going to give you a different view now from a different angle. So to each of my I'm going to ask you, only I'm going to ask those people who have never been to the uh, uh, Umrah before. So can I ask, please put your hands up if you haven't done the Umrah before. You've never been to Mecca. Please put your hands up. Please. I want to see. Sisters and men. Okay, right. So all these ones, I'm, don't worry. I'm, I'm going to stand the exam. I just want to see the percentage. Uh, not, not a lot. So put your hand three down. The one who's done Umrah before, put your hands up. I'm a young brother. So the done one, the one before is actually, actually more than the one who hasn't done it. MashaAllah, Tabarakal. Five. That's it. Okay, but you might even have done it before. You might hear information you never heard before. Okay, let's come back. Right, please, please focus on this to know what it is, everything. So you've got Shami corner, Iraqi corner, Yemeni corner, black stone. <coughs> Between the black stone and the door, okay, this is called Al Multazam, which is where the person weeps and cries, where the person here is Al Multazam. Now, the, 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 ideally, is to shut up and put your face and uh, chest on top of that place, but it's very hard. I would not recommend sister to do that. But you could do it by being in parallel to it, even a bit away from it, and you could just make a dua. And that is the person who, the, between the black stone, where the policeman stands there, and between the door. It's not underneath the door as people hook into the door. It's actually between the black stone and the door. It could be further away, and you could make as well your dua. Right. Let's start now with the Umrah. Right. I'm asking anybody from those who did not go there, what is the name of this? Who hasn't done that? Put your finger up. No. Yes, you haven't been there. Haven't been there. Well done. Maqam Ibrahim. Maqam Ibrahim. Very easy. MashaAllah, Maqam Ibrahim. Well done. Another person will tell me what is this? It's pointing to that semicircle. Anybody tell me what is this? Anybody from the ones who did not go there? Come on. Huh? Father? Huh? No? SubhanAllah. You haven't been there? No. Father? I don't know the actual name, but it's the rest of the original Father. Yeah, well, you have to should know the name, you see. <laughs> You failed the exam? No, no. no, no, no. Anybody? Yes, from the back? Maqam al-Hakim? Not Maqam. It is al-Hakim or al-Hashim. I'll give you three names. Al-Hijr, Hijr, or Hashim al So this is the name of it. Hijr, Hakim, Hashim. One of the three. You call it. Hijr is a well-known, but they call it Hijr Ismail. That's not correct. Al-Hijr. Third one. Let's go for quickly one. This one, anybody? Huh? Fadal. Blackstone, well done. 
Blackstone Corner. Blackstone. Okay. This one now. Huh? Very easy. Huh? Yes. Yeah. Yemeni Corner. Well done. All right. Okay. Go to this one. Anybody? Uh, this is a bit hard. Ah, uh, this boy there. Go on. Well done, Masha. The boy is a little up, ya Allah. Shabby Corner. Very hard, this one. Okay. This one is going to be what? The last one. Yes. Yeah. You have never been there before? Ah, no. <laughs> well done. Yeah, well done. Right, so it is the Iraqi corner. Okay, so anybody will tell me where is the direction here? We have said it, yes? In between, in between. Huh? Huh? Zamzam. Okay, Zamzam. Zamzam, and this is which one? Safa. <laughs> well done. Okay, this is Safa. Alhamdulillah. Now, we are there, and now this is inside the Kaaba, by the way. This is inside the Kaaba. Inside the Kaaba. Right. Let's just go now to the Lord of But when we go, inshallah, first we're going to go to the hotels. We're going to go to the hotel. The Talbiya is all the way on the coach until we arrive. We make Talbiya. But <coughs> just if, if we see the houses of Mecca, we could really start from the Talbiya. Uh, if you want just to make sure that you are being addressed with information, what you're going to be doing, so no problem. Kimpani used to stop as soon as they see the houses of Mecca. They stop making the Talbiya. But if you have got everything ready for you, you can make, can make it the Talbiya all the way to the hotel, no problem. Um, in there, inshallah, the hotel, we will be giving our rooms and everything, and then we'll go inside and we will have another ghusl. This ghusl is supposed to be when before we enter Mecca, we can't do that. But now, we are already, so we make the ghusl inside the, there, inshallah, and we will be ready to make the Umrah. Now, I'm going to show you, for the men, how to be dressed up. So, let's have a demonstration here. I will make a... <coughs> Come here, Abdurrahim. Where's the close of the club? Yeah, show us how you're going to make it for the... Can you do it? Okay, then hold this. <coughs> Okay, please, men. This is for the men to watch. Yes, exactly. Right, for the men, please make sure that you, uh, when you, uh, after you clean yourself, and I would say to the men as well, make sure that you have uh, something that uh, makes you unbothered to make any lubrication in between. Lubrication is very important. So, uh, Vaseline and things like this. Because when it gets hot and you're sweating, uh, so when you put the ihram, so this is the ihram, this is mashallah, a good big one, mashallah, this one. So do like this, and then first side, cover up to here. So you could have double cover on this. The first side, like this, and then make sure that you stretch it, you make it like this, this distance between your feet, yeah. and because uh, if you made it like this, you can be walking comfortably. So make sure that you are comfortable like that. And grab it like this all the way here, okay? And then just look slightly here, thing. Now, this, you don't need a pen. You don't need a pen. All you have to do is to fold it like this way, okay? Okay, right, so it's still long enough, and it's tight. This one is really tight, nothing can come out. Remember, you got nothing underneath that, so only this towel. Okay, it's only this now. Right. So this is the first part. Second part. Anybody can give it to me or I'm gonna pitch it. <laughs> Second part. Again, take it like this. Put it in your shoulders. Okay. Now one part of it is gonna go this way. Okay. You put it here. Now this one, better to put a pin. So you're not full. It's just a pin here to hold this with this. Okay, and then the second one, okay, goes, so after this you put the pin. Second one goes into here, another pin. <coughs> so you've got two pins and now your hands are free. One pin here, one pin here, that's it. When it comes to the Shabbat Tawaf al-Qudum, when make it the Tiba, you're going to be, all you have to do is just take out your hand, like that, and expose your sh right, right shoulder. It is only to be done when you make the Tawaf. You're not supposed to do it with the hotel. You're not supposed to do it with the Halaifa. You're not supposed to do it even in the hotel, the second one in Mecca. You're not supposed to do it even when you are going from the hotel to the Kaaba. You're only going to do this when you are about to start the Tawaf. So when we do some du'as and everything, and then after that we're going to make this 
which is called the bid'ah. We don't do it before Had, otherwise it's going to be bid'ah. Only you expose our shoulder when we reach the tawafing. Okay? Fine. There is hikmah in everything, but I haven't got the time to explain the story, a background story of each one. Now we are ready as men. Any question for the men? Khalas, alhamdulillah. So this is done. Haram, when once we enter the Masjid al Haram, as soon as we leave now, we're going to be dividing you into how many groups, Ya Bashir? Three groups. We'll be three groups going into the Haram to make the Umrah. Each one has got his uh, uh, Umrah permission. Is it needed, Ya Is it needed? Not necessary. So it's not needed to enter. So uh, if you want to leave, your, should they leave their mobile or should they take it with mobile with them? I would say, uh, remember, if you, have a, if you are a person who's a male, put your money in such a way that it is really safe. I wouldn't recommend for you to carry money with you to go there to make the Umrah. It's just make the Umrah, uh, uh, especially for the sisters as well. Make sure that you are having your bag properly. Don't take money with you unless it's necessary. I would say the mobile these days become essential. Mobile became essential because you've got your du'as and everything on it. So make sure maybe you've got a, one of these uh, uh, bags. Have you ever seen a bag not like this one, which just goes around? Yeah. The, belt. the belt one. The belt, yes, right. Yeah, you're allowed to have a belt, no problem. You're allowed to have a belt. Now these towels, regardless of how they are made, they are allowed to have a bit towel. The color is, which is what we ask is for a white. But if you had other than the white, it's going to be odd. Okay, but white. Regardless of the towel, how is it made? Remember, whether it's cotton, thread, nothing, no problem about that. Also, you're allowed to put your glasses, no problem, okay? You're allowed to put, as well, the belt that you want, no problem. You're allowed to have the watch, no problem. All of this is no problem. <coughs> Fine, coming back now. Soon as we <clears throat> go from the hotel as groups, remember there will be, it is not allowed to have a sign. So try to make sure that you are, uh, your eyes onto the person who's in front of you. And the person in front of you is on the person in front of you. Because you can't go maybe together like this. Sometimes you have to be one after each other. So do not lose one another, please. There will be some points if you lost, then you stop in a place. We will tell you where to stop there, and inshallah that you then you'll catch up with the brothers. Uh, everything's easy, Ahmadi. Very easy. So Umrah is as follows. We started already with many. Let make Allah be Umrah. Tell me all the way. And we're gonna do two things and uh, end up with a small thing. Two things, which is that is tawaf. And Sa'i, they're going to end up with cutting the hair. That's the Umrah. Man. That's the Umrah. That's the whole. I'm not going to use my present presentation. I'm going to use it because of the time. So I'm going to say to you now, when we now go to the Haram, we're going to enter the Haram like we enter the Masjid of the Prophet. So what do you say in the dua? Uh, Bismillah, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, Allahumma ftahli, awwaba, rahmatik. That's it. I enter with the right foot. We're going to keep going until I see the Kaaba. Kaaba is going to be showing. Once I see the Kaaba, then I would raise my hand and let's say the following words Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam fahayyina rabbana bis salam. That's it. So the leader of the group will tell us to say these words. By the way, you haven't said it, don't worry. The most important thing is to do the tawaf on the side. But these are the sunnah to maximize your, you want to do Amr 100%. So you get the boxes filled, huh? ticked, ticked boxes, alhamdulillah. Okay, it's still expiation. So, Allahumma ta salam, wa minka salam, fa hayyina rabbana bis salam. Khalas, that's it. Then we'll go to the, what's the Kaaba. Now, remember before I, uh, uh, something which is to do with the Maghrib prayer, the Isha prayer. Honey. Now, because we are leaving two o'clock, so we might arrive about after or before Isha. I would say Isha after or before, just about slightly. 7 o'clock, sorry, 7.30, 8 o'clock, half past 8, depends upon, okay? We're going to have a stop, inshallah, there to have food in the middle, okay? Um, now, 
we will pray Maghrib and Isha if you want in the Haram. But if, because maybe it's congestion, uh, what, do you, what do you recommend? Yeah, yeah. So we do the Maghrib Isha there. So Alhamdulillah, I, I mean, I, I like this. So you could have, because the prayer in the Haram is 100,000. I don't want to waste 100,000 pounds here. So a lot of, a lot of rewards. 100,000. So we will not, we will do the Dhuhr al-Asr here. We have 1,000, 1,000 already in our pocket. Okay, Maghrib al-Dhuhr al-Asr. We go all the way. So we're going to arrive about 8 o'clock. We have up to half past 11. Up, up to 12 o'clock. Somebody is getting this closer to me. Just the chair a bit slowly. That's it. Here's that Right, so we're going to be, the battery of is dying. Dying. Expected. <coughs> so I'm going to just talk like this, inshallah. Uh, the battery is dying because uh, this is natural. <laughs> when, you, when you depend upon battery, the battery is not going to let you down. Um, when we go to the... <coughs> No, no, it's okay, no, no. So, no, no, just go and charge it. Go and just take it and charge it, please. Let it charge it. Let it charge it. It's just not going to work. It's not going to work. It doesn't work for lectures. It's only for, you know, speakers. There is one speak, one speaker. Not for lectures. Tayyip, Ya Ikhwan, Barakallah Fikum. And I'm just going to be uh, making it inshallah show. When we now enter to the Kaaba, we're going to be doing the prayer before we start the Umrah. Because we're going to do the prayer before we start the Umrah. So uh, we're going to be praying it individually. Each person is going to pray on his own. We're going to pray the Maghrib three raka, and we're going to pray the uh, Isha two raka. Unless we caught up with the Imam during the Jama'ah. So if we, if we had, let's say for MashaAllah, our bus is a super shuttle. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. And we have arrived before Isha prayer. Because Isha prayer is 7.40, okay? So if I arrive there before Isha, we will join the Jama'ah, okay? We will say, okay, you pray the following. You start with your Maghrib. Listen to me, Akhwani. Start with your what? Your Maghrib. So the Imam is doing Isha, and I'm going to be doing what? Maghrib. When the Imam stands his fourth rak'ah, I'll keep sitting down, and I intend to depart, to detach myself from the Imam, and I make my tashahud, and I will finish by what? Maghrib, okay? Because I'm doing Maghrib. The Imam is doing Isha. He goes his now for his Isha, and I'm doing my tashahud to finish mine. And then as soon as I finish, I will get up, and I will join the Imam in his last rak'ah. If I joined him before he had said, Sami Allahu liman hamida, so I've joined him in the Fatiha, or if I've joined him in the Ruku'ah, then I caught up with the rak'ah. But if I haven't joined him in that, then I haven't caught up with the rak'ah. Meaning, if I haven't joined him with the Ruku'ah, then I have to do <coughs> how many rak'ah? Anybody like to tell me? Two. No. Four. Four. Because you are behind the Imam. You are not doing it on your own. If you're doing it on your own, you do it two. You do it four. Okay? So if you haven't caught up with a rak'ah, you do it four. If you caught up with a rak'ah, how many? Three. Because you're going to do what? Four. It's total. So if you caught up with a ruku', you caught up with a rak'ah. You add three to it, you miss it four. If you haven't caught up with a ruku', then you do it. Four, because you caught up with the Imam. The Imam is resident, so I have to pray the residential prayer. Fine. I have finished now my prayer with the Alhamdulillah. If, have, if it was after the Isha, then each person would do it the following way. Maghrib three, and Isha how many? Two. two. Because you're a traveler, your own, so you're praying two. Okay, so we finish Alhamdulillah Isha. Now we hold towards the Umrah. We don't want to do the Umrah and then... Uh, and, and then break us prayer, prayer later on because it could be the Umrah two hours, three hours, and then we get heading towards the middle of the night. The middle of the night is the end of Isha time. It's the end of Isha time. So we can't do it after middle night. So midnight now is about 12, 11 o'clock, 11.30, sorry, between 11.30 and 12 o'clock. Right, going back now. Going, so we're going to you know, see the Kaaba. If we have seen it before the Isha prayer, Alhamdulillah, we've done our dua. We said what? Allahumma ta salam. Now, now, when we go to the Kaaba, men, they start doing this, which is what? Taking the right shoulder. So you start in that tawaf. From that moment, you should expose your right shoulder. Right. The, you are with the group now. 
If you are not with the group, you could just, if you are with, not with the group, that's something else. You are with the group. There is, in Tawaf al Qudum, two things that has to be done. No other Tawaf has got it, which is the exposure of their right shoulder. The second one is called a Ramal. A Ramal means a brisk walk, which is like this. Now, because we have group, now you could really do this, but you are actually walking. Uh, so you do a part of it. So you could do it. That is in the first three rounds, a Ramal. So the first three rounds, you do it like this. Okay? And you are actually not, you're not going fast. You're not going fast. You are with the group. Because you are with the group, you have to stick with, the, with your wife and your, you know, your sister or mother. She's with you, she's going to be. Okay? So that is. But the women, they can't do that. That's Ramal is only for the men. And it's been done for a, a reason. This is to follow up something that has been done in the past, in the Prophet Sallallahu time. <laughs> this is the Kuffar, when the Muslim went, came to the Kaaba, because of the truth of Al-Hudaybah and the Kuffar, they were in charge of the Kaaba. They made a rumor that the Muslims who are coming from the Medina are very weak. They are now, they have got this fever of the Medina. So the Prophet of Allah wants to show them that, no, we are powerful, and you cannot dare to lay a finger upon us. So he said to them to make this ramen. Now, imagine that the table is the Kaaba. I'll show it to you now. The Kaaba, let's go back to the Kaaba. Okay, that's the Kaaba. Right. <coughs> so, we said here is the black stone. Now, the people of Quraysh, when they had the truce, or the, uh, you could say the agreement, they had to move out, people of Quraysh, of the Kaaba, and leave this for the Muslims for three days to make their wife Umrah go back to Medina. Because the Kaaba was under the uh, control of Quraysh. When they moved back, they moved back to that side. To that side. So, what they can see from the Kaaba, this side, this side, and that side. They can't see this side. Okay? So the Prophet of Allah wants to prove to the people of Quraysh that we are strong. So he made the command to make this called a Raman. Brisk walk. To show them that we are powerful. Because when you do like this, after a journey, Remember, they didn't go by coach. They went by camel. Took them four days to arrive. So if you have got a fever, you will be dead. Tired. <clears throat> so the Prophet of Allah commanded to do like this. Now, the, where does it start? Only in three rounds. Only three rounds to prove to the Quran we're strong. So you did it from here. First round, all the way up to here. And then start walking. No more. Relax. Have a break. Because they can't see us. Okay? So here, the brisk walk all the way. <coughs> to the Yemeni corner. Here, they can't see us. Walk again. Three times, three rounds, sorry. Three rounds and after that, the normal walk. So we have proved to the people of Quraysh. Now we don't have Quraysh, we don't have Kuffar, but we still follow the steps of the Prophet Muhammad SAW. We're doing Sa'i, Safa Marwa. We don't have Hajar, we don't have Ismail crying, but still we're doing the same thing that Um Hajar, our mother, she did. Right, so we did now that when we come to the black stone, listen, this is the black stone. When we come to it, we're gonna do the following. Now we're not gonna be, uh, making the tawaf so close, congested, and not too far away. It's going to be in this plate. For those who's got wheelchair, who's got wheelchair? Yeah, wheelchair cannot go down with us. So the wheelchair have a different group. They're going to go on the uh, on the level where this for the wheelchairs. Okay. Huh? And if you have a wheelchair, baby's no problem. Baby's no problem. Wheelchair. Who's got a wheelchair here? There's nobody putting his hands up. Yeah. Two wheelchairs, okay? All right. So those wheelchairs are going to be separate from us. Because you're going to do it with a different... They're not allowed with wheelchairs here. All right? Okay. So when you... So please make focus and pay attention so you can understand what you're going to... When you are there upstairs, there will be a green light showing to you that this is the, what, the black stone. So you can see it there. So when we're going to arrive to the black stone, we're going to be doing the following. We're going to first face it. Face it. Put your right hand all towards it. And you say, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. Only <coughs> once. Okay? So, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. And keep moving. So it's not Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, I'm moving. No, I have to face it. Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. Because I can't put my hands away. It's too far away from me. I, I, mean, I mean, there's no people that would put my hand and even kiss my hand and kiss it or even kiss the black stone, even to prostrate on the black stone. All of that is not possible. We don't want to do that because we don't want to shove. We came here to make sure that we are peaceful and we're not causing harm. These people, when they go to the Blackstone, just in order to get to the Blackstone, they have already 
poke the eye of somebody, injured somebody, hurt somebody. They've incurred so many sins to go and kiss a black stone. Why should you do that? If you had an opportunity with this, I would tell you, if you want to have a black stone, go Zohar time on your own. Zohar, Zohar. Okay? Which is really hot. Nobody likes to be going there. Very few people. And then line up, maybe there's a queue. Then you could kiss the black stone if you want. But it's not really part of, as an uh, essential of the Umrah. It is not. So, Bismillah al-Akbar, we started now the first round. I'm going to go with men, remember, we are like this. Okay? Until we reach here, and then we're going to walk. When we reach here, between here and there, there is a dua. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, wa fil akhirati hasana, wa qina adab al-nar. Only once. Finished. Then we walk. Bismillah, Allah, Akbar. Men, second round, we're going to start. There is no specific dua in the rounds. You could say Quran. You could say anything that you like. But there is no such thing, dua of the first round, dua of the second round. All of that is from elevation. It's not correct. So we're going to go now again until we are. It doesn't matter we get from Maqam Ibrahim this side or that side. It doesn't matter. Okay? We're going to go here and then start walking. And Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adab al-nar. Third one. Bismillah Allah Akbar. Again, running here, walking. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. Fourth round. Now the fourth round, there is no running. Fourth round, there is no running. Bismillah Allah Akbar. Only once remember. And you start like this. Bismillah Allah Akbar. You can see people doing like this, throwing things. Just pointing like that. Bismillah Allah Akbar. Because I know some people will imitate other people. I'm trying to tell you that don't follow people. You follow the knowledge. Hey, don't see somebody. Oh, he's nice. He's saying like this. Let me do it like this. These are the people who are causing congestion here. Why? Because of their ignorance. And they stop. Okay, they stop. Then they make people, everybody stop. You know, like on your motorway, if a car stopped, they are clock, isn't it? Same thing here happens with the people going around. If then you understood the sunnah, Bismillah Allah Akbar, and he's going. I don't have to stop. But fourth round, fifth round, sixth round, seventh round. Okay? Now, when we go to the seventh round, you don't say Bismillah Allah Akbar, because you ended it now. So you take the seventh, Bismillah Allah Akbar, at the beginning of the seventh, but not when you finish the seventh. Okay? So when we finish the seventh now, we're going to go to Maqam Ibrahim. Now we're going to pass this area, and we're going to go from here, <coughs> there, this way. So we're going to pass this area, because this idea, I'm going to go this way. We will follow the groups that way, because there will be space there. Now, ideally, we're going to make the two stuff, two rak'ah, here, Maqam Ibrahim, but we can't, too many people. So we're going to do it far away, it doesn't matter. Behind them, no problem. So, Maqam Ibrahim, we pass it, we go there. Remember now, as soon as you finish the seventh round, men, please return your shoulder. Straight away, as soon as you finish the seventh, khalas. Put it back, because you can't pray with your shoulder exposed. Remember that. Put your shoulder, cover it. Go back now, we're going to go together, and individually we're going to pray to Raka. <coughs> Called Maqam Ibrahim. When we go into this, we say, وَاتَّخِذُوا مِن مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَصَلَّى And this is in the Quran. وَاتَّخِذُوا Take from the Maqam Ibrahim what? A place to pray. وَصَلَّى Okay? Covering the shoulder. This word, وَاتَّخِذُوا مِن مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَصَلَّى Men and women, they could as well. وَاتَّخِذُوا مِن مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَصَلَّى Then, you're going to go to the behind. Men and women, each one, you're going to pray to Raka. First rak'ah, قُلْ يَا يُوَا الْكَافِرُونَ Second rak'ah, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٍ We finish now the two rak'ah of Maqam Ibrahim. We're going to go to where now? To drink Zamzam. This Zamzam there, before a long time ago, we used to go to the well underneath. And now we go down. But there's no well now. Khalas, alhamdulillah, there's water. Drink Zamzam, drink Zamzam, drink Zamzam, drink Zamzam. After you finish Zamzam, now is there a dua for Zamzam? Ah, Allah, man yis'alika ilman nafi'an wa rizqan wasi'an. Uh, 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 this is the dua album for you. You could say it. You don't, you don't have to say anything. But the most important when you drink, say Bismillah. Bismillah. You could put water on your head as well. But there is no extra reward to make wudu with the Zamzam, by the way. You can make wudu with the Zamzam. And you are allowed to make wudu with the Zamzam. You are allowed to make even a stinger with the Zamzam. The companions before, they didn't have water except for Zamzam to make water with it, to make stinger with it. So it's now you have this disgrading or degrading or disgracing. The Zamzam water, it's not correct. Okay. Now, Zama'u Zamzam, Dima Shuri Bala. Very important to understand now, the dua. 
When you make zamzam, this is zamzam to be drank for your intention. So if you have a good intention for your father, mother, yourself, your children, then make that intention. I'm drinking this water for the sake of that, my children to be such and such, for my father to be... Okay, Zakallah. <coughs> Right. There. Yeah. Uh, so we finish with Alhamdulillah. Now Maqam Ibrahim, Zamzam. Make Zamzam with the intention that you like. After Zamzam, we don't go to Safa as some people they do. No. We're going to go to an area as close as possible. We could see the black stone. We're going to say, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. This has been skipped by, I would say, 99.9% .9 of the people. They don't go to this one. After this, the Sunnah is to say, Bismillah, Allah. But then, <coughs> go to Safa. When we go to Safa, we say, Inna Safa wal Marwata min Sha'airillah. Fa man hajja al bayta aw i'tamara fala junaha alayhi ayyat tawwa fa bihima. Wa man tatawwa khayran fa inna Allah shakirun alim. This is the ayah to be said only once. That's it. You have a booklet, you could read it, and then you say, Nabda'u bima bada Allahu bih. We start with Allah started. That means Safa started with Allah made Hajar to start from where? From the Safa. So we go to the Safa now, and we're going to make the seven round of Sa'i between Safa and Marwa. In the Safa, when we reach, we're going to head towards the Kaaba like this, and we're going to say the dua. The following adhkar and then two dua. Adhkar is three times and the dua is twice. Listen, you're going to say, without raising up the hands, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lah, lahu al mulk wa lahu al hamd, yuhyi wa yunit, wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Everything is in your uh, PowerPoint presentation. Then, la ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lah, and jaza wa nasara abdah. This is called first dhikr. Then after the first dhikr, I raise up my hands and I make my dua. Whatever dua I want. The dua that you want. The dua to make dua for those people told you, make me dua, huh? Uh, they have put, filled up your cases with dua, make me dua. <laughs> okay, now you can say, you get the dua for them and make sure that you make dua for yourself when you come. Make the dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put you in the haqq, inshallah. After that, you put your hands down. Please listen. Put your hands down. After that, you put your hands down. And then you say that, that again, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah. Lahu al-mulku lahu al-hamd. Yuhi wa yumit wa wala kulli shayin qadir. La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah. Anjaza wa'da. Wa nasara abda. Wa hazama al-ahzab wa'da. Then you raise up again in your hands. And you're going to be making dua, dua, dua. And then hands down. And then you say the adkar again, Allahu Akbar, Allah Akbar, to the end. So three adkar, and how many dua? Two dua, two dua in between. So you two dua in between, two dua. So then you descend down towards the marwa. So we're going down. We don't have to go all the way to the wall and the glass and there and all of it. Just as soon as you get close, you could make it on top of the safa. It's not from the sunnah to stick your, you know, your, your, your body to that. It's not. Go to the marwa. Okay, when we go to the Marwa, it's a slight hill, if we are on the down floor, floor, but if you are on the normal floors, like the one with the wheelchair, there will be no down now, it's always level. When we reach a light, called green lights, these green lights indicate the Abtah, indicates the Abtah. The Abtah is mean the place where there's a, Um Hajar, she had tucked up her clothes and accelerated, she made this very fast run. So the men only, the men only, can do that. Now we are in a group, you could do it, because we're going to do it. Now remember, we're going to do it from one side, we're going to keep doing it from the same side. So if we did go from Safa to Marwa, on the, next to the right wall, okay? So when we go to the second round, we do it from the right wall as well. So it's not correct to do it in the middle, and then in the left, no, no, no. Keep to your place, this is the Sunnah. So you are next to the wall, keep to the wall. You run, 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 and then when you run, of course, you're going to wait for your group because everybody's going to run like you, especially the sisters. Wait until your wife catches up with you. Okay? And then we go up to the marwa. And the marwa, we do the same thing that we did on the safa. Three adkar, two dua. <coughs> then we go from the marwa down to the safa. Again, we reach the green. 
run and again remember keep to the wall is better you could remember so you're going to keep to the wall here run 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 and then wait for your family and then go to the sofa do the same thing so this is first second <coughs> third fourth sixth seventh so the sixth sorry and seventh you're going to end up on the marwa on the marwa the last one there is no dua on the marwa there is no dua it's like you remember when we said bismillah allah akbar at the beginning of the seventh but not at the end same thing here as well, we say the dua and the at the beginning of the circle, the side, but not at the end. Khalas, we finished. Now we go home. Or we go for the men, if you want, to the barbers to cut your hair, shave it. For the sisters, you go to your house, inshallah, and make the cut there. The cut is actually for the sisters, is you gather your hair and you cut that much. If you want to cut more, it's up to you. But I'm just saying you cut that much. Okay, the sisters cut as much. That's if you collect your hair. And, cut. and it's not correct to do it in front of the men. It's not to do it as well in there in the house. It's not correct. So your home shall go home, and then after that your umrah is finished. For you brothers, you go to the barber. Now the best is to completely shave. If you got no hair, like our brother Zahid there, our man, my right arm, man, <laughs> then you don't have to do nothing. There's no such thing you're going to put your blade just like this for, for nothing to show up, no. Okay, so if you got a bit of hair, you got a bit of hair, by the way. Then you use the uh, uh, the, the razor. They call it in Pakistani Urdu uh, ten. ten. <laughs> <laughs> like use the ten. Alhamdulillah. So now you finish the Ramadan. Alhamdulillah. Now you take it for close. Have a ghusl, relaxation. Alhamdulillah. By the time we finish, it's about I would say, according to my experience, twelve one o'clock in the morning. Okay, so well before Fajr, inshallah. One o'clock, we'll by one o'clock, we inshallah we will be finished, everybody. Any question now, Fadal? Yalla, because we have uh, some instruction to be said now. Just a quick one, um, Shia. You said the women cut their hair. Can they cut their own hair then? Cut? Okay, can they, women? So this is a very good question. A person, can he, as a person, see the haram? Can he <laughs> cut the hair of somebody? Yes, no problem. So even if you are. It's state of haram. You did not cut your hair. You could cut the hair of somebody. No problem. But not you cut. You, you, no, you could cut your own. No problem. You could, you have, you have a, mashallah, you're going to save money. You've got your machine. Cut your hair. No problem. So cutting your hair for yourself, cutting your hair for somebody else, no problem about that. Does that solve the question? Uh, what's the ruling on footwear? What? Footwear. Footwear. Right. Oh, a very good question. You're not allowed to put socks. 